the last video, we looked at how you can use tracking to find out what wildlife is living in an area. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to record what you find and why you might want to provide that information to other people. Biological recording can simply be a note in a notebook stating what you found, where you found it, the date and any other relevant information such as the weather conditions, surrounding habitat, etc. Having your own field notes like this is a great way of getting to know what's in your area and seeing how that changes over time. You may want to feed this information into a local or national recording scheme. The benefit of doing this is that your information will be confined with other records of that species or of all the species in that area to form a bigger picture. This bigger picture can help to establish current levels of living diversity, known as biodiversity, and to monitor changes in populations of wildlife, plants, etc. This information can be used locally, nationally, or even internationally in science and wildlife conservation to inform decisions to help nature. For example, a biological record of a rare species, such as a great crested newt, in an area proposed for a housing development could affect whether that development is allowed to go ahead, whether it needs to be modified, or whether the developers need to put in protective measures known as mitigation to protect the wildlife on that site. With biological recording, every single record really does count, even the records of common species such as starlings or rabbits. Remember that just because they are common now does not mean that they will be in the future, so it's important for us to be able to detect any declines early on. Recording of invasive or non-native species such as mink, signal crayfish or Himalayan balsam is critical in tracking the arrival and spread of these species and in allowing conservationists to take appropriate action to control them. So, how can you go about contributing to these local or national recording schemes? Now we're going to look at a few different methods. First up, let's look at an app called iRecord that you can download for free on your phone. iRecord is a central database for biological records across the UK. Here you can upload your record, including a photo if you have one, get your record checked by experts, and look on a map to view other records in your area. The data collected through iRecord is then made available to support that all important research and decision making at local and national levels. For example, if someone submits a record of a red squirrel on iRecord, it gets passed on to the Scottish Wildlife Trust's Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels project to help them in their fight to save our native red squirrel. With iRecord, you even have your own account where all the records you have submitted are kept together in one place. So you can look back to see what you've recorded and watch your records build up and contribute to the bigger picture. If you find a badger set, you can use a paper recording form to collect information to send to our charity, Scottish Badgers. This form, which can be found on our website, allows you to collect information on where the set is, when you find it, the surrounding habitat, and the field signs you found at the set, such as footprints, badger hairs, or dung. You will also be asked to count the number of entrances at the set 
to give us an idea of what type of set it might be. You can also log this information quickly and easily on our website. You might also want to use a wildlife trail camera to confirm or monitor what you find. Wildlife trail cameras are special cameras that can be set up outside and left in an area. They are triggered to switch on by the heat or motion of a passing animal. They can be used in photo or video mode to record what passes by and they have special infrared lights so that they can record in the dark as well as during daylight hours. Trail cameras are a really great tool for establishing what is there, how many and what their behaviour is. For example, we found this strange nest at the base of a tree. We put up a trail camera to see who was using it. And here's what we found. Now, let's have a look at how you go about setting up a trail camera. Lindsay is keen to go back out and get more information about those burrows she found last time. Let's see how she goes about it and what she finds out. This is a trail cam. So we are able to put this outside a badger set. It has a camera at the front here and a light that comes on, which is activated by the movement of the badger, and it records 30 seconds clips. We can then collect all information, say over a week at a certain badger set, and see what the badger's been up to. So here's the trail cam I'm going to put out, and a great big lock, because it's going to be put out in an urban area, so I don't want it to go missing. I've got a place in mind in a local woodland, and I've got permission from the landowner too. Hopefully it'll catch us some good footage. Right behind me is a well-established badger set. There's about six or seven main entrance holes and you can see the spoil heaps well-worn outside. Badgers are protected by law, so just make sure you're being very mindful when walking about a badger set. Make sure that you're not being too heavy-footed in any of the tunnels. Keep your distance. I'm desperate to see if there's going to be any badger babies this year. So I found this perfect spot. It's far enough away from the hole. It's far enough up the tree that badgers won't sniff it. But I need to get the angle right. So I'm going to use some of these sticks. And I'm going to pop them in behind here. Just to angle it a little bit further down. And that's perfect. Now all I need to do open it up. I've got my batteries in there already. Need to make sure in the correct mode. Switch it on. Check that it's going to get the right spot. And off we go. I've also put another trail camera facing in a slightly different direction. Hopefully we'll pick up something else that's using the holes. All we have to do now is wait. I'll come back in a few days to check to see if we've got anything on our camera. So I've collected it back in. I can't wait to see what's on this. I know that there's 200 and odd clips. So I'm going to get it into the computer and see what we can see. Whoa, that's a lot of clips. I'll make sure I just pick out the best ones for you. First up is this little wren collecting some nesting material and a grey squirrel and a little mouse. Here we go, a fox sniffing around. Oh, I wonder if it can smell badgers. Hmm, is it going to go down? This would be interesting. I wonder if it's going to live here. Nope. It's showing its athletic ability there. So it's still not going into that hole. Very interested. 
think we can safely say that the foxes here are not using this hole. Let's spot a black and white face here. I wonder if it's going to go down that hole. Ah! So that's how it's down there. Some soggy badgers. Oh dear, not good in July. You hear that whistling. But we still have that second camera. I wonder if it's managed to pick up any badger babies. Well, we certainly found a badger. This is an adult. Oh, and here's another one. A bit smaller, this one. They're doing some clearing out, some digging, if to say it. Oh, having a good sniff around. And a little face. Could this be a cub? On to the last. Oh, look! The cub is out. Oh, it's so sweet. There it is, bumbling along. Oh. It might take a bit of practice. Top tips, make sure it's on the right setting or you'll end up with a bunch of still pictures like these. Make sure the leaves and things are out of the way so it doesn't trip your camera all the time. And if it's too close up to a hole, badger snot might get all over your camera. Great stuff. If you'd like to try out a trail camera for yourself, there are lots of affordable options available. You could start out by setting up a trail camera in your garden to see what wildlife is visiting. If you'd like to venture further afield, and put up a trail camera in your local woodland or green space, you'd need to speak to the landowner and remember not to disturb the wildlife that you're trying to film. If you would like to share any footage you collect, just be aware that some species are very rare or vulnerable to persecution, so you'll need to be careful not to give away too much detail about the exact location of your camera. Thanks for listening to our series of videos for Tracker School. Why not take a look at our challenge choices sheet to see what activities you might like to try to build up your tracking skills.